Welcome to our Sabbath service this morning. We're so happy to see all of you here today. We have a very special program. Uh, this will be our Christmas program today. And we're so thankful that all of you here are here today, in person or online, to um, celebrate the wonderful birth of Jesus Christ. We have a, a number of announcements this morning. First, uh, we have a couple of families to welcome into our church family. Um, first is the Brownell family, our pastor, and his wonderful family uh, transfer, have already transferred their membership from the Eureka SDA Church. So we're happy to have them. And then the Robles family um, have transferred their membership from the AIA SDA Church. Um, <clears throat> also, we are encouraging you to vote, uh, church members to vote regarding the recommendations of the Board of Elders and the um, church board to add two new positions to our church board. Um, it was sent out via email on a Wednesday. Um, if you are a regular member of our church and did not receive a ballot in your email, you may contact the church office or email our, um, our uh, church um, email to get a ballot. Uh, thank you to the, for the many brightly wrapped and unwrapped toys, gift cards, and blankets that were donated to the Family Promise Program. Your gifts will bring joy to many homeless families. Also, the HJSDA Pathfinder Club meets on the second and fourth Sabbaths of each month at 3 p.m. If you're interested in joining, please contact Andy Izuka or um, Aaron Buttery. Um, the, the, it was already voted on. Um, homeless is on the second and last Sabbath of each um, month. You can contact Dennis Mealy if you're interested in that. Um, prayer meeting is going to take a break um, for a couple of weeks and will resume on January 6th, 2021. The Hawaii Conference Women's Ministries Department is soliciting your gifts of love to the ladies and children currently sheltered at the women's shelter. They're mostly looking for toiletry items, and so you can bring them here to the church and put them in the um, Women's Ministries Christmas box, and they're gonna be picked up on December 26th. Um, there's a flyer in the foyer if you're interested in, in contributing to that. Uh, we, we also have a... Uh, visiting caravan this afternoon from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. And it will be visiting with Pastor and his family right here in the back part of our church. So the idea will be that we're gonna drive, kind of do a drive-through on our campus here. So we'll be entering through the Issei side, so that's the mountain side, Malka side of the church, and then driving um, in the back part of the church. The pastor and the family will be, sit, will be located kind of in the, um, uh, where the youth room is in the back part of the church so you can wave to them and greet them and then just keep driving on through and then exit on this side the the ocean side of our church there also will be an additional outreach um, with our poinsettias so if you're interested in participating in that we're, we're planning to um, pass out any that are left to some um, family church family members who aren't able to come to church um, so on the topic on the, of the poinsettias, it's such a wonderful um, tradition that we have, and it's a, it's a, um, they're donated, and we want to express a sincere gratitude and, and thanks to uh, the anonymous donors of the, the beautiful poinsettia plants. Um, they've already, uh, some of them have already been um, gifted to members of our community. Um, more will be gifted to our community, but we also have a tradition of um, our family, church family, uh, if they're interested, um, can have a poinsettia at the end of church. So you can go ahead and um, approach um, one of us at the back of the church to uh, help you with that. Um, <clears throat> Pastor Enoch wanted uh, me to announce a, a regarding a special communion service for the new year. Please join us in person or online for this special event. It will be held January 1st from 7 to 8 p.m. Everyone is welcome and encouraged to participate. 
If you plan to join online, please pick up your pre-filled communion cups at the church before January 1st. And we have some today here. So if you're, if you're interested in um, participating in communion from home, you can pick up your pre-filled communion cups. Um, you can also reach out to the church office if you want to um, get the communion cups for, for home, and we can drop them off at your residence. Foot washing will not be accommodated at the church due to COVID. However, you are welcome to do it ahead of time if you so choose. This is a great opportunity to connect spiritually with your family, friends, or spouse. Our offering this morning is for a local church budget. Um, we encourage you to uh, contribute online or in person. We have our um, offering plate at the back of the church, and we thank you for your um, uh, thoughtfulness towards the offering and tithes. Let's pray. Dear God, we're so thankful for the opportunity to come to worship you this morning. Thank you for the blessings that you've given us throughout the week. Thank you for keeping us in your loving care. We know that we need extra support and um, extra grace during this time of the COVID pandemic. And so many folks are struggling in many different ways with health, with economics, um, just with feeling lonely or isolated um, or having strange relationships. We ask that you will please be with all of our church family members as well as our neighbors. Help us to love our neighbors um, as we love ourselves. And we ask that you will please um, help us to um, continue to pray on a regular basis um, for, the, for the strength and the wisdom that we need, as well as to study your word. Um, there's some particular families that need extra prayers today, Monty and his wife Nancy, um, and the extended Madsen family um, due to Monty's se um, uh, severe medical condition. We also that you uh, um, please provide support for 20-year-old Timothy, who is a newly committed believer. Um, please also be with Wilma Cam's cousin, who was recently diagnosed with cancer and is facing surgery. Um, ongoing healing and encouragement for Lori Lo, Kyoko Kenjo, Shige Kobashigawa, Lori Hugh. And uh, prayers for the father of a former HMA student who is under the care of an oncologist and given a short prognosis. We also pray for our young people, and there's many that we keep in our, in our thoughts and our prayers today. Please guide us in our worship service. Thank you for the promise of hope that we have in this Christmas season. Um, we celebrate your birth, Jesus, and we ask that you help us to remember the reason for this season and help us um, to continually keep our eyes on you. These things we pray in your name. Amen.
There's a reason why. Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. One of the hardest things moms and dads have is raising children and teaching them what's right and wrong. My wife and I had another baby when we were old, really old. I'm 81 and my wife is 65. My wife and I had a baby five years ago and he's five years old now. My son hasn't had a chance to come to Sabbath school, so he'd like to come. So let me introduce you to my son. Link, are you ready? Yeah, Dad, I'm ready. Hi, boys and girls. My name is Link. I'm so happy to meet you. I've been stuck in the house with this COVID-19. Here's a picture of my third daughters when they were little. Dad had to teach them to be good kids also. Well, it's fun to teach the children new things that are on the internet. I was showing Link the other day of this young lady and young man. Here's a picture of them. You can see that the young lady doesn't have an arm and the young man doesn't have any legs. Yeah, and when I saw them, I felt so bad to them. How sad. But my dad said, I'm looking at things the wrong way. That's right. I told Link that you can look at things two ways. You can look at things from a positive point of view and say, I can do it. Or you can look at things as a victim and say, oh, poor me. Why don't you take a look at the video that I showed Link. healthy each other and think of helping each other with their needs. They're actually stronger than many of the people who have both arms and legs. So dad says we have to use our brains to overcome, but we have to think. When we get older, there are harder things to overcome. So we must practice to make our brains get stronger. Let's look at another video and watch closely and see how the young man uses his arms and two stools to move around. And watch how happy they are. Count, he wants you to succeed. If he did not withhold the gift of his dear son, then never doubt he'll give the strength you need. He won't forget the faith and love you've shown. He will not fail to care for. Tito are happier than most Tito with arms and legs. Did you see how they laughed and played? Look at how they helped each other. Jesus says we can do anything because he gives us the power and the strength. So the Tito with the strongest minds train their brains to help each other's thirst and then worry about themselves later. So what do you want the boys and girls to learn, Link? Well, boys and girls, I want you to learn that this young couple with no arms and legs do a lot better than Tito with both arms and legs. So you have to have a good attitude. Use your brains, boys and girls. Well, Link, guess what next week is? Next week is Christmas, Eddie Dotty. So what do you want to say to everybody? Eddie Dotty, have a happy Sabbath and a Merry Christmas. The Sabbath days are yours and mine. Sabbath days are yours and mine. Happy day. 
And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census took place when Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. その頃、皇帝アウグストスから全領土の住民に登録をせよとの着令が出た。これはクレニオがシリアの総督であった時に行われた最初の人口調査であった。人々は皆登録をするためにそれぞれ自分の町へ帰っていった。ヨセフもダビデの家系であり、またその血統であったのでガリラヤの町ナザレを出てユダヤのベスレヘムというダビデの町へ登っていったそれはすでに身重になっていた言い名付けの妻マリアと共に登録をするためであったところが彼らがベスレヘムに滞在している間にマリアは月が満ちて発号を生み布にくるんで貝馬桶の中に寝かせた客間には彼らのいる余地がなかったからであるさてこの地方で羊飼いたちが夜野宿しながら羊の群れの番をしていたすると主の見つかいが現れ主の栄光が彼らをめぐり照らしたので彼らは非常に恐れた見つかいは言った恐れるな見よすべての民に与えられる大きな喜びをあなた方に伝える今日ダビデの町にあなた方のために救い主がお生まれになったこの方こそ主なるキリストであるあなた方は幼子が布にくるまって貝馬桶の中に寝かしてあるのを見るであろうそれがあなた方に与えられる印であるするとたちまちおびただしい天の軍勢が現れ見つかいと一緒になって神を賛美していった糸高きところでは神に栄光があるように、地の上では御心にかなう人々に平和があるように
When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. ミツカイたちが彼らを離れて天に帰った時羊飼いたちはさあベツレヘムへ行って主がお知らせくださったその出来事を見てこようではないかと互いに語り合ったそしてそいで行ってマリアとヨセフまた会話を受け入れに貸
All is calm and all is bright. Everywhere, but in your heart tonight, they're singing carols of joy and peace. But you feel too far gone and too far out of reach. Heaven's high to manger low. There is no distance the Prince of Peace won't go. From manger low to Calvary's hill. When your pain runs deep, His love runs deeper still. He has always loved you, child, and he always will. Somewhere in your silent night, heaven hears the song. Your broken heart is cried. Hope is here, just lift your. Just lift your head for love has come to find you somewhere in your silent night. Love will find you. No, I want to thank everyone for coming to see this old man. And what's your advice to us in these difficult days? Don't give up. I am with you. Yes. Be not afraid. Yes. That's the pastor's thing. Amen. Yes. <laughs> yes. Good message. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, 
they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. そこでヘロデは密かに博士たちを呼んで星の現れた時について詳しく聞き彼らをベツレヘムに使わせていった行ってその幼子のことを詳しく調べ見つかったら私に知らせてくれ私も拝めに行くから彼らは王の言うことを聞いて出かけると見よ彼らが東方で見た星が彼らより先に進んで幼子のいるところまで行きその上にとどまった。彼らはその星を見て非常に喜びにあふれたそして家に入って母マリアのそばにいる幼子に会いひれ伏して拝みまた宝の箱を開けて黄金入庫持つ薬などの贈り物を捧げたそして夢でヘロデのところに帰るなどの貢ぎを受けたので他の道を通って自分の国へ帰っていった。
but it's still a blessing to hear from each other. And uh, music is is so important for worship. And so thank you for for those of you that are able to participate. I'm sure there will be more opportunities. If you have something musical that you would like to share with our church family, we'd love to have you contact um, Lavonda or one of the song leaders uh, to make that happen. Well, here we are. Another year almost gone. An interesting year at that. Some people are excited to see where the new year goes. But I think some of us are also apprehensive, wondering what the future might hold. And so with those things on our mind, we are being rushed into a new year here in a couple short weeks. What will we take with us from this year? What will we leave behind? You know, sometimes I have some really interesting thoughts or ideas go through my head. Does anybody ever have that? Okay, a few of you are willing to admit that. Yeah, so, you know, and and one of those that I've had, I'm going to share with you today. I hope it's not too weird. Just have mercy on me. Okay. One of those is, as I journeyed with my wife through, well, four pregnancies, we lost one, but through three complete pregnancies, There were times where I felt like I was missing out on that connection that she had with our children. There's something about a woman carrying a baby to full term, giving birth, nursing, all that goes along with that special connection, that special bond that a woman has with a baby. Now, trust me, I didn't think too long and hard about it. I certainly don't want to experience what I saw her experience. All right, let's make that really clear. (laughs) At the same time, there's something so deeply profound, something so deeply special that I know that you women have experienced that have been um, blessed to have children, that connection, that bond that you have with your children. And as I think about this Christmas time, as Jesus coming, entering into human life, I think of that bond that he has with each one of us, that bond that he longs to have with each one of us. At the beginning, he was able to walk and talk freely. He came to the garden. There was no sin. There was no evil that befell man at that time. And so Jesus had this special connection with Adam and Eve, and he wants to have that same connection with you and I today. Do you believe that? As sin entered in, we know the story, it gets worse and worse, and and God, of course, had a plan from the very beginning, way back in Genesis chapter 3, right? That there would be a promised one that would come and would crush the serpent's head, but but, but the heel would be bruised as well. So we had that promise, and and then in the sanctuary service, Jesus said, let them make me a sanctuary. Do you know how it continues? that I might what? Dwell among them. You see, God with us is not just a term that came about when Jesus was born or even when Jesus was conceived in Mary. It was all all the way back to the conception of this earth as we know it. God being one with us. And so enters sin and the problem that we face. The discouragements, the struggles, the depression that sometimes overtakes us as man. But we are reminded of the fact that God wants to be one with us. And during this Christmas season, I'm imagining like any other Christmas season, we rightly focus on that night in Bethlehem. When God became a little child and he came to this earth, but what was that night really about? Well, it was about God being one with us. Of course, we know that. God was courageous when he came as God in human flesh. Think about that for a moment. God was courageous when he took on human flesh. He sacrificed himself 
to save us sin-sick humans so that He might once again restore us to that connection that He desired to have. The world is a dark place spiritually, isn't it? I hope that you're seeing that. Even as the world seemingly tries to come together to combat and battle COVID, friends, it's still a dark, sin-sick world. There's corruption that's happening at every turn. In fact, we know that there will be corruption with us until the end because, what? The love of money is the root of all evil. So we see that there's a bigger plan going on behind the scenes, this battle between good and evil, between God and man. And in the midst of this turmoil and dysfunction, the reign of King Herod comes Jesus. You see, God shows up at the most difficult times in earth's history, doesn't He? Especially when you're looking for it. Especially when you have eyes to see. There had to be some special kind of light to illuminate the world. You see, we're so foolish <laughs> as humans. We think that, that somehow, somehow we can save our planet. We think that somehow we can save our fallen, sin-sick, darkened world. That somehow, that man can somehow be this light that is needed in this dark place. But is that what the Bible teaches? Can we save ourselves? Can we fix our problems? Sure, we might do some patchwork here and there, but friends, darkness cannot create light. And so we needed the light of life, a light not of this world, a supernatural light, if you will. And so here comes Jesus to become one with us, God in flesh. And as I think about this story I think about that teenager, that young woman obeying and submitting to God. And I think about what an example that teenager was to a fallen human race. In fact, we can learn something from Mary that we don't see in Zechariah. Notice. Mary's interaction in Luke chapter 1. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Luke chapter 1. I'm going to keep the message short and sweet today, so follow along with me closely, please. I'll be reading quickly here. It says, Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is what? With you. Boy, that's how I'd like to meet Gabriel. How about you? <laughs> the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be what? Afraid. I don't know what's more troublesome. The things that we face on a daily basis, the virus, or meeting an angelic being face to face. I think everything pales in comparison to that. But what is the message that this heavenly being has for Mary? Do not what? Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Is that a message that we need to hear today? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's a timely message. Do not be afraid. Well, why should I not be afraid? He says, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have what? found favor with God. What else matters, friends? Think about it. 
what else matters? What is taking precedence in our life that matters more than finding favor with God? Sometimes we hang on so tightly to the things of this world that, that I wonder if we're not making that our God instead of the one that says, do not be afraid. Do you want to find favor with God? I do. I want to find favor with God and man, but sometimes finding favor with both is not possible. And that's why we are called supremely to answer only to God in all matters of life. And so he says, you have found favor with God. What a message. Verse 31, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the son of the highest and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be what? No end. Now that's a kingdom I can get behind. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be? since I do not know a man. And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age and this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God... Nothing will be impossible. After the message that was delivered to Mary, what was her response? Did you catch it? What did she say? How can this be? How can this be? Did it seem possible to her? She, she's wondering, how in the world could this be? Did you know that earlier in that chapter, we almost see a compare and contrast? Zacharias, right? Zacharias has a very similar response when he is visited and he's told that he's going to have a child. And Zacharias said to the angel in verse 18 of Luke chapter 1, how can I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is well advanced in years. And the angel answered and said, I am Gabriel, who stands in the very presence of God and was sent to speak to you and bring you these tidings. What happens to Zacharias in his response to Gabriel? Do you remember? He couldn't talk, right? Till his son was born. Till John the Baptist was born. He couldn't talk. Somehow, it's almost the same phrase that we see Zacharias use and Mary use, but yet one found favor with God. Of course, Zacharias did too, but he had some sort of doubt in his mind. Notice what Zacharias says. Not only does he say, oh, how can this be? He says, how shall I know this? And then does what? He gives excuses. <laughs> I'm old. Have you seen my wife? There's no way we can have a child. Gabriel says, shush <laughs> in our house we don't use shut up right so we use shush shush up that's a lot better okay all right take your word for it okay so uh it does sound less harsh doesn't it all right gabriel's like hey look just shush all right i am gabriel i am from the presence of the lord and i have this message for you why are you doubting just stop it Sometimes I think that's how God reacts to our inquisitions because he knows that we have that doubt in our mind. Not this wonderment that Mary has. Notice how she responds. She says, how can this be? 
since I do not know a man. They were in the very similar, maybe God's winking at her ignorance since she's young, I don't know. But it seems that there is something different about her response. Mary sought understanding while Zacharias expressed doubt by demanding proof. He wanted proof that God was going to do what he said he was going to do. And we see that in verse 20. It says, you did not believe my words. You did not believe my words. So we see this kind of compare and contrast. This teenager, Mary's response. You see, friends, we're all like Mary in a way. That if we say to God, I am the handmaiden of the Lord. There's something that we can experience like Zacharias and Mary did. The very presence of God in us. Just in case there's any doubt in your mind, let's think about this. Let's look at Genesis chapter 1. Kind of an odd place to go on a Christmas sermon, isn't it? No, you'll never see Genesis 1 the same. <laughs> if you haven't connected these dots, every Christmas it will come back to your mind. Not as a haunting, but as a promise. As a promise of restoration. Notice what it says, Genesis 1 verse 1. What's happening here? In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. What did God create? The heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. It was nothing. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. What was? The Spirit of God was what? Hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And what happened? There was light. And God saw that the light was what? Good. And God divided the light from the darkness. The day he called, uh, I'm sorry, the light he called day and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Then God said, let there be a firmament. And you know that the list goes on and on until all that we see and experience and enjoy and appreciate about this life, we know that it was the hand of God at work. Did you catch? Of course, we don't have the Hebrew. We're not all fluent in Hebrew, so I won't bother you with that. But notice the words even here in English, and you're going to pick up on it. And the Spirit of God was what? Hovering over the face of the waters. Does that sound like anything that we just read in Luke chapter 1? Let's read it one more time. The promise of the angel says that the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will what? Overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Even though one's in Hebrew and the other is in Greek, it's the same it's the same language. The literary concept is the same. The overshadowing of the spirit that was present at creation is the same power that came upon Mary when she conceived the Christ child. God with us. You don't have your hymnals, but I'm going to show you a hymn I want to point you to. Hymn number 185. Hymn number 185. Oh, little town of Bethlehem. Oh, wow, I wrote that down wrong. Somebody know that one by heart? Oh, that's okay. I won't look at the whole, at the whole song. 
But there's a line in, in uh, the hymn, O Little Town of Bethlehem. It says, cast out our sin and what? Enter in. Be born in us today. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. Is there truth to this Christmas hymn that we sing most years? Can Christ be born in us today? What do you think? The answer is yes. The answer is a resounding yes. As we submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit as Mary did, He takes up residence inside of us. The same Spirit that brought this world into existence is the same Spirit that births God in us. That's the message that I want you to grasp today. And as we accept that gift of God to be one with us, to be alive in us, to dwell in us as His sanctuary, by accepting that gift of God, we also in turn become God's gifts to a sin-darkened world. And so my prayer is for myself and for each one of you that today we can make that commitment as we're in this Christmas season, we're about to start a new year to recommit to God and say, Lord, be born in us. Will you make that commitment with me this morning? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, what simple concepts but yet profound and deep meaning we find today in your scripture. Because we know that you desire to be one with us, we accept that gift. As you would have offered your son to restore us into your image, we accept that challenge today, not on our own. We accept for you, for the power of your Holy Spirit, to be upon us and to birth God in us, that we can in turn be this gift that you have called us to be to a sin-darkened world. You've called us to be light, but not before we accept the light of life, the greatest light, the supernatural light from above. And so we do accept your gift today, Lord. May you live in us and through us. And all of God's people said, amen, amen.